What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we have the all new OMP Hobby M2 Evo. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this little helicopter. A lot of people have been waiting for this review on this little helicopter and we have finally got our hands on one. At Urcha 2022, I was able to go to the Buddy RC tent and a huge thank you to Nancy from OMP Hobby as well as Dale for hooking us up with this M2 Evo to get a review done on. So I wanna thank you guys very much for that. I greatly appreciate it. So first thing we're gonna go off of is box M2 Evo incredible little design we have bigger main blades longer tail boom bigger tail motor we're going to go over all that it's a, a lot different than the m2 explore m2 v2 and even the m2 v1 so first thing we're going to have we have multiple different color schemes on this one there's four for the m2 evo where the m2 v uh v2 and explore only had three different color schemes so we have a eggplanted white color scheme we have a racing yellow color scheme a charm orange and a glamour red ours is the glamour red of course, it is already still sealed. Just so you guys know, this is a first initial impression. Now, I did get to look at one at the event, so I will say that. I did get to look at the M2 Evo at the event, and it is a awesome, awesome little looking helicopter, a lot different than the V2 and the Explorer. So we have all of our specs on the back. We running 190 millimeter blade length. The FBL traditional style rotor head with mixing arms and washout arms. We'll go over all that. Still the same flight controller. Uh, we're running a different tail motor again, and I believe the main motor is a little bit bigger. Everything else is the same. Supporting of uh, DSMX and Futaba S-Bus has OMP protocol built in. So let's go ahead and let's cut this thing open and let's get to looking at it. Oh, satisfying first cut. As you can tell, it is brand new first unboxing satisfying sound of getting rid of all this plastic. Now the plastic is off. You can see the nice sleeve is very nice matte color to it. I think actually looks really good. The matte color scheme doesn't reflect the lights off of the camera too bad. So again, it is just like the traditional OMP. You have this very nice foam case that comes with it. And I'm going to assume that it is the exact same case as the V2 Explorer. So we have a very nice rugged case. You can drop your helicopter. You don't have to worry about nothing happening to it. Carry it around. You can even put a little strap there. Very nice little case. Go ahead and open it up. And oh, wow. Look at that. The red looks really good. Now, the one I seen was yellow, but the red looks incredible. So the first thing we have in our box is the OMP flight controller settings. Now, if you have an OMP M2 V2 Explorer, these are going to be the same exact controller settings. Everything is the same. Of course, we have the plastic hinge at the top, so this guy can open and close as many times as you want. My original V2, or my original Explorer, same as the V2, just not metal head, has well over a year old and well over a thousand flights, and my hinges are still perfect, so your hinges will last a long time. We have a little descent pack to help keep moisture out of here. And we have a little parts bag here that's going to come with a feathering shaft, some extra screws. We have a main shaft, some extra zip ties, some servo horns. Looks like some double-sided tape. Oh, there's Velcro. Some Velcro, so a little goodie bag. And then we also have a swash plate leveler. So I've seen a few people ask about this. This is a swash plate leveler. And we'll explain how this goes on the swash plate to check for level, which is very nice they include that. And I'm going to assume that it will work as well with the uh, V2 Explorer. So we're going to go ahead and stick these guys out of here. And let's get to the main thing, the M2 Evo. So that's all we have in the box. We're going to set the box aside. And just look at that paint quality. So the Evo paint quality shines. I think the paint quality is a lot better on the Evo than the M2 V2 or M2 Explorer. We have, of course, the traditional fbl style head with mixing arms all aluminum head we have nice little beauty black beauty ring washers we have the same so the blades are identical as far as design so now i did get to talk to a lot of talking this weekend about the m2 explorer what was done for what and why so the blade design is identically the same as the m2 v2 m2 explorer that design that we love with the wider blade going to a you know a wider root here and going to a narrower tip 
but the actual core design and thickness of the blade is the same. They're just 190 millimeters, so they are longer. So we have our, of course, your blade holder, which is nice. I like blade holders on a helicopter. We have the same traditional style shape tail boom. It is just, again, longer. Now, this tail boom is adjustable, meaning that I've seen this question too. They say adjustable tail boom. What does it mean by adjustable? Say, for example, you want to run smaller main blades, the original M2 main blades. You can loosen up your boom clamp. You can slide your boom in, move your boom closer. You can run smaller main blades. Uh, for example, at the event, a guy crashed his. Unfortunately, parts aren't available right now and it snapped the boom off, literally just pulled it out, took the piece out, slid it back in, and go back to flying. So you have an adjustment, and you can also do it on tail performance and such. A shorter tail is gonna be faster, a longer tail is gonna be slower, but more accurate. So depending on your flying style and what you like, you could shorten and play with the boom length. But it is the same traditional style boom. So we have the OMPHobby.com logo, with a nice little painted into the boom, which isn't very nice. We have the traditional carbon fiber tail skid with the color matched motor mount for the tail motor and we have some nice white and red decal to the tail skid so it's not just a traditional carbon fiber skid so very very nice there i hope you did a great job there three mo three bolts holding the motor on it is a sunny sky tail motor and the tail motor is bigger than the v2 explorer motor wires do run inside the boom here so they're nice and protected tail blade is also longer and we're going to compare this to the m2 v2 or into explore so that'll be a comparison video so you guys can see the differences in the helicopter we have the traditional two bolt holes holding the tail blade on the tail blade shape is different as well it's a fatter blade a little bit longer with a pointier tip to it so tail blade tail performance is incredible on the explore skids are the traditional m2 v2 m2 explorer nylon skids so they will take a nice beating they're very flexible very giving so when you have a hard landing they're not going to break like a traditional carbon fiber skid will so let's go ahead and let's pull the canopy the canopy design is incredible i love all the different you know omp hobby m2 turn me on we got the 3d performance from omp in it canopy is plastic so we do have a plastic canopy and the canopy design is different than the v2 explorer just by a little bit of the back here and, and the shaping off here but it is the same basic design of canopy. So it is a plastic canopy. It is very thick. It does feel very good, so very thick. I'm not a huge plastic canopy person, but can't plastic is better as far as paint not chipping off of it. And in minor crashes, you don't get cracks in it. You might get a little whiten, but the canopy is in very, very nicely done. So great job OMP for that. We're gonna set that guy aside. So now the other main difference is going to be battery size. So now the OMP M2 Evo is running a 750 milliamp race line battery. So it is a 60C to 120C 750 milliamp pack OMP Hobby. We are running, of course, XT30 connector. And you can, if you have the M2 Explorer, M2 V2, you can run your traditional 650 milliamp OMP batteries. They do fit, no problem. You'll just have to take your little sliding blocking tray off. So now we're going to go into the battery design. Now they made this simpler. Again, I talked to them this weekend and got a lot of information on this. So the main idea of this slide and battery friction fit with simplicity, keep part cost down, keep part count down, simplicity. So you're going to have two little O-rings here. So you have two nicely done O-rings and these O-rings are what is creating the friction fit. So as this battery enters the helicopter, it is very tight, okay? That battery is tight, and I will give it that. That battery is not going to come out. I mean, that helicopter, that battery is in there, and that battery hasn't even moved. Okay, now there is a stop in the back. If you guys can see that little stop down in there, that stop is going to eliminate the battery from ever going back and touching the motor, and you have a great gap between the battery and the actual motor itself. So we have a very nice gap there, so that way there is no chance that that battery is going to touch the motor. So now you can use your M2 Explorer batteries, of course, or the, the Gen Zace batteries. We have a couple different batteries. We'll try in here and see what we can fit, and we'll I'll get a caliper out and give you guys an inside diameter holes or a measurement so you can see what size or what batteries you have that might fit. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed my caliper. 
and we are going to zero it out. So now we're gonna go see what kind of battery size that we can fit. So for width wise, let's go to the actual inside here. We have 26.10 millimeters. So you have 28 millimeters in between the actual carbon frame, the carbon frame, but there is a little ridge right here. So inside that little ridge, you have 26 millimeters. So now height wise, you're gonna have a average of about 24 millimeters. That'll give you still that friction fit. And length wise, roughly from the back stop. I mean, you could go all the way up as far as 50 millimeters long battery wise. So now the stock battery is even longer than that. So the stock battery is 59, so 60 millimeters long by we have 24 millimeters wide and 23 millimeters tall so that is stock battery size so that'll give you an idea of what batteries you have and what batteries would fit inside the model okay so now we know what battery sizes we could fit what we have again simplicity is what their idea was on this bring the cost overall cost of the model down and make it more affordable for the average person and they honestly did an incredible job at that. So now we're gonna move on from the battery side. So again, main motor wise is a Sunny Sky R40 S3. Not exactly sure on the KV, but the motor is bigger. Bottom design of the motor is different. Uh, they're starting, Sunny Sky has a design trend going of this design to it, which is really cool. We're testing a, a prototype motor for bigger models with that design and it looks awesome. Your main shaft is going to slide through with a screw right down here so it's going to be a pinch bolt style you can see it pinches together right there your main shaft is going to go up through your bearing blocks your upper and lower servo mounts up to the head now swash plate or feathering shaft wise they are the same as the uh, explorer slash v2 main shaft is different as the main shaft is longer so moving up now we have an aluminum bottom plate now this is something different from the v2 explore slash explorer to the evo is this bottom servo plate now this servo plate if you notice now this is a one piece framed side so one piece no steps out they have the carbon molded out this way and this way on both sides but the bottom plate you notice and is part of the boom block this whole boom block assembly is part of this bottom plate so you get rigidity simplicity so it starts here goes back through here, you get your lower servo mounts, your motor mounts done to it, your lower bearing block is part of this as it moves back and goes up into your bearing block. Now your bearing block is a very simple design here. It is a pinch design, so it is cut out the top. You have one screw that runs through here with a lock nut on the back side of it. So just remember that there is a lock nut and it is recessed into the block itself so you can loosen and tighten the bearing the boom block without having to worry about putting a nut driver or something on the inside now your upper frame slash servo mount slash bearing block is going to be what holds the canopy post as well as the elevator servo and aileron and pitch servo as well as your upper bearing block and a piece of carbon fiber is what attaches the lower block to the upper block. So very simplistic design, very, very simplistic, but very strong and very rigid. You can feel the overall rigidity of this model is very, very strong. Very nice feel of the helicopter. And it, and it feels much bigger than the M2 V2 slash Explorer. You can really feel that. Now, linkage wise is going to be the same. It is a turnbuckle style linkage where you can adjust up or down as one's a left-handed thread, one's a right-handed thread, and the ball links are all the same as the Explorer and the V2. Swash plate wise is different only because of the four balls versus the Explorer slash V2 is only two balls for a DFC style head. So now we're going to move on to the head part of the design. So now you can see they went away from DFC and went back to the traditional FBL head. So now the reasoning of a FBL head over a DFC head. So DFC head, you only have two points of contact. You have one and you have two. Well, of course, you have a thicker arm here that runs down, and there's your two points of contact, but you do have swash plate that can minutely move side to side. And on smaller helicopters, personally, I never noticed it. Bigger helicopters, you can. I like both heads. It doesn't matter to me which head designs on the helicopter, but you do get a more locked-in feel with the traditional FBL-style head with FBL-style head with mixing arms. 
So now you have your adjustable length here for blade tracking, which is something that the Explorer slash V2 did not have. It was a fixed arm. So as you can see, it is the same exact arm as your swash plate servo linkage arms up here. So you have, of course, a left-handed, right-handed thread. So you have a full mix of tunability and adjustability. Your mixer arms are ball bearing into these nice little screws go through your little washout arms and they run down and say OMP on the back side of them. So the head is a lot more rigid, a lot more locked in feeling, no play in the head, no slop. And that's something that you can feel really, really solid head, solid, solid. I mean, there is zero play, zero slop in anything. Everything on this helicopter is incredibly well designed. OMP did a great job making the M2, which was already a fantastic model, and they made it one step better, which I didn't think was possible. So again, we have the same one piece mainframe design going up and through. So your frame starts here, goes all the way through, putting the nice little 3D performance here just to kind of give it a nice look. No more multiple pieces. If you break this frame side, it's one side, swap it, you're good to go. Again, like I said, FBL unit is a traditional M2 V2 slash Explorer with your tunability by lights. So now you have full set pitch servo. Everything like the V2 slash Explorer is the same on here. If you are running OMP protocol, like on a TX16S or OpenTX source radio, your bind button will be here. If you are running DSMX like I am, I will be running a DSMX satellite. I will put it in the back probably like I did on the M2 V2 or on the M2 Explorer. So I will be running DSMX port, which is this first port right here. If you're a Futaba guy and you're running SBUS, you would be plug your SBUS port into here. So there's plenty of options for all you guys who want to fly different style helicopter radios. But I, I have to say they did such a such a great job on this model. OMP really, really killed it. They did everything is just so well thought out, so well designed. I mean, it is absolutely just a work of art. The Evo is worth the wait, guys. Really, really worth the wait. So all you guys that are waiting for the Evo, here it is. It is ready to be shipping very soon. Everybody should start getting them. One thing, too, is the servos. So they are the plastic case, metal-geared servos, same servos as the M2V2 M2 Explorer. But with plastic casing, idea of cutting costs down. The price of this model is extremely good. Uh, very well, very surprised at the price of this model. So this is a great, great helicopter for the money. You have a carbon plastic anti-rotation bracket. You have carbon composite main blades, which are very, very solid. Of course, we all know that from the V2. And we have a nice stiffer plastic tail blade. So this tail blade, one thing on the V2 and slash Explorer is the tail blade is very thin and very flimsy and it does flex, which isn't a bad thing at all. It just has flex to it. This one is very, very solid. So they, they took the M2 V2 slash Explorer and they just stepped it up a notch. They really turned this model into a incredible piece of art. Before I forget, let's talk about swashplate leveler. Okay, swashplate leveler. So I already went ahead and cut mine out of the bag. Now you'll notice it is a very nice piece of aluminum. Of course it is aluminum, just like everything else on the model. So your swash plate leveler is designed to do this. You have a recessed cutout here. This cutout is going to slide into the helicopter like this. So you are going to slide that guy down and drop it down this way. When you drop your servos down, it is going to rest on the leveler and that is going to give you your option. Now you can flip this leveler over so that is the idea of the leveler. You can see the screws will ride into these little grooves on here and here. But now with this leveler all the way down, you'll notice that your servos are not 90 degrees. So I'm not quite sure. And we have negative pitch in the blades, which you can notice if you look at the negative pitch. So I'm not 100% sure about the leveler. So I'll do some more look at that and figure that part out. But that is the idea of the leveler. And again, if I'm doing something wrong on the leveler, please let me know because this is the way that it was supposed to go. So it is bottomed out. Everything is level, but it is not level level, if that makes sense. You can see our servos are down on each end, but the leveler is really not needed. It is an awesome idea to have, but not needed. So there is the M2 
Evo that everybody has been waiting for. I have gotten so many messages and comments and questions on this little guy. I can tell you right now, I am thoroughly and thoroughly impressed. So we'll be setting this up on the iX12. So we'll be doing a full setup video, which is very, very simple to do. So I wanna thank each and every one of you guys so much for watching. We are so close to 2000 subscribers. So please guys, can everybody go ahead and just hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's get to 2000. I appreciate all of you so much. Again, I wanna give a huge, huge thank you to Nancy from OMP Hobby. Dale, Buddy RC, all of you guys, awesome, awesome talking, meeting, and having this awesome opportunity to review the all new, thoroughly wanted OMP Hobby M2 Evo. So I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching. Give this video a like, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.